guys, I'm Laura Vitale and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I am going to show you how to make my version of what I think are just like the best barbecue ribs ever and summertime is here and it's about a thousand degrees outside and I really want to share this recipe with you because it's perfect for any party and specifically for 4th of July, which is why I'm bringing you this recipe now. Um, it was requested by Clayton GRE on the video I posted a little while back about what you wanted to see me make on the grill for the 4th of July celebration. I got a ton of amazing, amazing requests, so inspiring, which is a part of the reason why I love doing those videos because it really does kind of light a light bulb and just kind of inspires me with all these ideas. So thank you so much for everyone that requested such awesome things and I'll definitely be playing around with those and creating my own versions of all, everything you guys have been asking for. But today we're doing a classic barbecue ribs with like a, just a classic version of it because I've never done it here on Lauren in the Kitchen and I figured it's about time I show you my method. Now the main ingredients are going to be your slab of ribs which is, this is just one slab of baby back ribs and I've got it here on a, on a baking sheet with some aluminum foil. And I've also got some spices because I'm going to make a spice rub for them. And what I've got here is paprika, chili powder, granulated garlic, onion, brown sugar, and dried mustard, plenty of salt and black pepper, and then you'll need some barbecue sauce, which I have in the fridge because I don't need it right now. The first thing you need to do is get your oven preheated to 300. These are barbecue ribs on the grill. They're going to be sticky, they're going to be delicious, but I do them this way by basically cooking them in the oven for most of the time so that they kind of fall apart and they're beautifully tender and then finishing them off on the grill because I find it difficult to slow cook these on the grill without them coloring too much. So I do that in the oven, it works great, everyone loves it. When you finish them on the grill, it's like a match made in heaven. So what I'm going to do is in my little spice bowl here, I'm going to crack a lot of black pepper or as much as you like and I'm going to add some salt. Now, you could certainly do the same recipe with spare ribs. I prefer baby back ribs, but hey, but hey Jack, <laughs> to each his own, makes the world go round. I don't prefer to do this recipe with spare ribs only because I feel like they're, I think there's too fatty, there's too much meat on the bone, um, and a lot, most of it is, is, is fat, so I prefer baby backs. And that brown sugar and paprika and chili powder, it just, I'm telling you, it's amazing. And you can do the same recipe with some chicken, um, pork chops, you know, you name it. What I'm doing is I'm just going to take this dry rub and just put half of it on one side and pat it in. And then just kind of, with whatever you've got left. I love this rub. It's my go-to for anything anything barbecue. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this in my aluminum foil. I'm going to pop this into the oven. Now, normally, to be honest with you, I would put this in the fridge for a couple of hours, um, but it's not really necessary. In fact, I am going to put this in the fridge for a couple of hours because I like for the spices to kind of stick onto the ribs and kind of marinate a little bit, and then I'm going to put this into the oven. Now I'm going to put this into the fridge for two hours and then I'm going to put it into my oven that's been preheated at 300 for about an hour and a half or until the meat is really tender kind of falls off the bone. I'll show you what they look like when they're done. I had my ribs in the oven for about two hours and now I've taken them out and I let them cool for a little bit. I took, I unwrapped the foil obviously and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all you want to get your uh, grill preheated to medium high and you want to make sure that when you turn your grill on you keep the lid on, covered, you know, the grill covered for the first 10 minutes. It's always perfectly preheated that way. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some barbecue sauce and this is where you can get fancy schmancy. You can use your favorite barbecue sauce. You can use it, you know, if you've got a family favorite recipe, by all means make that. You can use your store bought favorite barbecue sauce or you can hop on over to lauraandthekitchen.com and get my recipe for my barbecue sauce. It's completely up to you. You can get fancy and use like different flavored barbecue sauces. I'm using a standard because it's a standard sort of barbecue, baby back ribs kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my barbecue sauce at this point and I'm just going to slather this. Now the ribs are fully cooked so there's no cross contamination so you don't have to worry about that because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take up a little bit of this now and smear it all over one side and I'm going to head on over to the grill brush in hand, tongues in hand, barbecue sauce in hand, and ribs, and we're going to just keep basting and grilling them until they're, 
the, the barbecue sauce is bubbling and it's charring and it's turning golden, uh, beautiful colors. And uh, let's hold over. Let's hop on over to the grill. If I can manage all of this. I'm just gonna take my slab of ribs and put this barbecue sauce side down and then just take my brush and just brush the opposite side and just continue to do this. I'm probably gonna flip it in about a minute or two. Do another coating of barbecue sauce, let that caramelize flip it again, do another coating on this side and caramelize. You get the drip. It doesn't take, you know, it doesn't take a lot. It just, it's just easy. Put that on there as much or as little as you like, really. I suddenly went British. Don't ask. And just let it do its thing. Let it get nice and sticky and blackened in some places and what a good rib should be all, should be about. I had my ribs on the grill for a total of about 10 minutes or so. All I did was had the grill on really, really high heat, kept brushing it with barbecue sauce and kept flipping them. I flipped them about three times so that they got like, you know, basically three coats of barbecue sauce on both sides. My mouth is salivating from how good this smells. Let me turn this over. Look at that. Mm. I'm excited about this. They kind of just fall right apart. I love the little end bits where it's like really charred. I don't know, it's my favorite. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm. They are divine. Mm. They're sweet, sticky, charred melt in your mouth, tender, everything good ribs should be. Go to laurenandkitchen.com to get the recipe. I hope you've enjoyed spending time with me. Let me know if you do make these for your 4th of July get together or any get together by, you know, any get together. Posted a picture on my fam, you know, Facebook fan page. I'd love to see your version of it. And I hope to see you guys next time. Bye-bye.